it's just brilliant to talk to you, Gary. Um, I, I've got to say to you, um, as you know, we were connected by a common friend um, who done a piece of work in your patch, who I do a lot of work with. Um, but it's been an exciting journey just to hear about you. And it's been a real pleasure to meet with you. Um, and I know one of the other two people have talked about what you do. Um, and we've had a couple of chats and I really like what you do. So I want to get at underneath what you do, yeah. um, uh, you know, help us, you know, in this film series, understand what it is that we do or don't know that helps recovery communities work. That's that's the gist of this conversation, yeah. of course. Um, and you've got your own particular angle. So we've we've talked to other groups with other angles and your angle is centered a little bit around uh, around fitness at one level. So we'll we, we can unpick all of that uh, as uh -huh. we go along. Um, yeah. But the place we always like to start and the place I'd like to start with you is just tell me a little bit about you, uh, you know, um, you know, some of that brief personal stuff. Why are you here? Why have you got into um, recovery and recovery communities, really? And and what's your motivation for having set up? Um, um, tell me what's the shorthand? You just call it ARC for shorthand, do you, for the purpose of this we conversation? Just, we just call it ARC. ARC's, ARC's fine. Uh, people call it ARC Fitness, but just ARC just seems to be the flow like. So we'll, we'll go with ARC. OK, so so, yeah, so let's okay. let's talk about your little journey into setting up ARC and then we'll talk about mm. ARC itself and the journey for ARC. But what about you mm. personally? How, how come it's you that I'm talking to rather than anybody else? Yeah. <laughs> so I was really interested. I was trying to like figure out, like, how do you structure this type of conversation? And I suppose the reality is um, I am 12 years long term recovery, whatever the language is around that. I had a I lot of kind of struggles and issues kind of whenever I was a lot younger. Um, namely with self-confidence, self-esteem and kind of anxiety and things like that and mm -hmm. use substances at a really young age to kind of self-manage a lot of that, you know, that the typical to feel accepted and things like that. I was bullied in school so I was really kind of unconfident and things and then just literally fell on the substance just with both feet and found for me that 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 really helped me kind of navigate the social landscapes where I came from. Hi, and then like anybody who starts to use these things without developing any mechanisms came reliant on substances over the years. And then I suppose the stuff, the chaos and the destruction that comes with that. Um, was, for me, it was predominantly alcohol. Alcohol was my drug of choice. Um, again, because I started young, it was accessible. You know, I would have dabbled quite a lot with prescription medication and, and some other things as well. But alcohol was always the prevalent one. Um, our setting, I'm Irish, so the culture here. Well, I was about to say that. So we're, you're calling me from London and you said where you come from. And, and uh, mm. we mustn't let the people listening to the conversation assume that your accent means that you are coming from there. where your accent is. But you are coming from yeah. where the accent comes from, yes. <laughs> so coming from Northern Ireland, Ireland, the, the you know, everything is centred around alcohol, your social milestones, how you fit in the society and all that stuff. So... You know, it was very ingrained in that culture um, and it just kind of spiralled over the years. So I suppose by the age of 30, I had a failed marriage, lost jobs, criminal convictions. I had broken my back and lost parts of my hand in various alcohol related accidents, um, numerous hospitalizations and clinical detoxes and then various residential rehabilitation centres. So. By the age I was 30, I had done so much damage and so much kind of destruction through my substance use. I, I really wanted, I needed to change. And, and um, it, it isn't that story. I mean, you've given it to us really succinctly, but that's yeah. a, each person's story is unique, but it's also a, a, a common story at another level, isn't it, Yes, 100%. And like, I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I had a great upbringing. I had wonderful parents and a loving home. Like, I didn't suffer a major trauma growing up. I just came from Northern Ireland. We, you know, we have a lot of anxiety and trauma in our society. I was afraid of everything. And I just found something that worked for me at mm -hmm. that age. Um, but the problem for me is that I was that immediate connection with alcohol was so destructive and almost it was so passionate. And I and I I I, I chased it and I looked after it and I longed after it and I wanted to be part of that. Yeah, yeah. Um so to be a, a sober person sitting here today, um, so far removed from that is 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 really we, we've come a long way, um, and I suppose my life was different then. Like I was managing supermarkets and things like that. So.